Hi and welcome back to this series of videos about sustainability for small and medium sized enterprises. In this video we're going to be looking at water and we're going to be thinking about our water use and how we can reduce that and the sort of steps and measures to make ourselves much more resilient in future to the situations that's going to happen. So this is in the UK in particular, we're talking about the extremes of flooding and drought. And um, I just wanted to start off with this uh, graphic here, which I've used in lots of different organisations. Um, it shows our planet and it's got the different uh, water wrapped up as these blue marbles. Now the largest blue marble there is um, all the salt water available on our planet. And the smaller one, considerably smaller one, is the fresh water um, on the planet. And then the tiny blue dot you can see is actually fresh water available for our use now. So we think of our planet as this beautiful blue marble, which it is, um, and we think that water is untapped, but the vast majority is in our seas um, or in the uh, uh, Antarctic ice and glacial ice. Um, which and obviously the water situation is changing rapidly across our planet. So the scenarios at the moment are um, the glacial loss and the Arctic ice loss is actually kind of at the top end of the scenarios in the um, IPCC reporting. Um, and this is a video that was taken from our local climate assembly we've just completed um, and it is showing a uh, a graph that water engineers um, for the utility companies in the southeast refer to as the jaws of death graph um, and this is showing the available water and the potential deficit for available water as demand increases um, going forward so there are some significant things to think about. I mean, the southeast of England is one of the most water stressed places on the planet, as Kristen explains in her um, presentation. Um, and so these are quite big uh, changes and um, things that we actually need to think about. This precious resource, water is a precious resource. Now, we can obviously look at the um, efficient ways of using water. So whatever your building has, this is another nice presentation I found. We can look at different um, technological fixes in much the same way as energy, audit what the organisation has, install um, efficient fixtures and fittings, think about um, projects for if you're in, using lots of water, whether you can recycle water, what options there might be to harvest rainwater or recycle grey water within an organisation. Um, and then obviously if you're, you've got um, larger states, think about making sure that you're metering them properly, that you've got the, um, the meters working, that your engineers know to prioritise leaks um, when you're actually moving around the system. Um, and those things are kind of wrapped up as part of your planning and maintenance things on your day-to-day -day basis um, and then future planning we do need to think as I said about drought and flooding in the UK we do have both extremes and they can be significantly devastating um, for, as for businesses and we've seen that in um, across the country and in increasingly in this last decade as well now with drought, we want to preserve and use and reuse our water as much as possible. So that's where you're thinking about, like I was saying, water harvesting. If you've got um, heavy water processes, what can you be doing to capture that water and recycle it into the process? And if you're in a um, flood risk area, and the, like I said, local authorities will have information about um, flood risks for your sites, do um, think about how you might work with your local communities, with the local authorities in the areas, with um, uh, community groups and different organisations to implement uh, different measures in the environment to reduce the risk of flooding. And in a lot of cases, this is kind of green infrastructure, natural water systems. Um, so think about those wider um, environmental factors for your organisation and that might also take in whether your um, staff have the ability to continue coming to work in kind of uh, some of these crisis situations or if you need them to come to work and then with your actions and targets so you've got your baseline data you've been collecting and gathering that and researching it much the same way for your energy and um, think about then 
how you can implement different targets. So you've got your um, technological targets, but you can also think about how you are getting your staff to reduce the amount of water that they're using. Um, you might change the whether you have a water cooler is available in the office to whether you just buy tapped water and use filters um, get the staff on board ask them to come up with ideas as well they might be doing um, sustainability actions already around single use um, uh, plastics for example we we took a, we set up a refill scheme in Worthing uh, to encourage people to refill water bottles instead of um, buying new single-use plastic ones and obviously that is using water in a more effective way because if you're not having to transport the water from further afield you're using the water straight out the tap and quite often the water quality straight out the tap is um, better than you're finding in plastic bottles which contain microplastics anyway so yes lots of things to think about within the water and as as always different elements of sustainability bring in different um, parts of different areas so um, don't get hung up on that just keep focused keep thinking about your water um, it doesn't matter if a action comes under this area or under another area as long as you're you've got it there and you're thinking about how to implement it and what timelines and how that will be evaluated going forward so in the next video we're going to be looking at waste which is um, another exciting area and you will start thinking a bit more about how we might uh, think about waste as a resource um, within a circular economy model. So I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you.